we've covered the layer system in Mari, but a new addition to the software is the Node Graph Editor. If you've ever used Nuke or other pieces of software with nodal workflows, then this is going to feel very familiar to you. For simplicity, I've made a clean project with a single channel. I'm going to add a paint layer and a procedural color in the layers palette to show how Mari handles this behind the scenes in the Node Graph Editor. When you create anything in the layer palette, it will also have made it in the Node Graph for you too. So if we head over to the Node Graph palette now, we can see those layers that we've created. I'm going to rearrange them from left to right just to make it easier to understand. You can also press the L button on your keyboard to auto lay out everything for you. So you can see now we've got a paint node. This is the first layer we created. Then after that, we see a color node. This was the second procedural layer we made. In between that, we have a merge node. More on that one later. You can see the node has an input and an output box on either side. If you click here, you can drag out an arrow, which you can then plug into another node. And this is how you build up your node graph. If you press a number on your keyboard while selecting a node, much like Nuke, that node and anything that feeds up into it will be displayed. If you select off that node and hit the same number you pressed on your keyboard, it will jump back to it. You can use this to easily set up shortcuts to switch between points along your node graph. If you go to the end of this node tree, we can see our channel output node. Whatever feeds into here will be what is written out when you export that channel. Let's go back to that merge node now. When working with layers, whatever sits on the top of your stack is merged over whatever is below it. As you can see, Mari makes this merge node for us by default when we created those layers. This is how it's combining them behind the scenes. If you want to add anything extra into your node tree, then you need to make sure you merge it in. If we double click this node, we can open our node properties palette to the side and see that it has the same blend modes we are given when working with layers too. If we zoom in on the merge node, you can see that there are three inputs, base, over, and mask. You would plug in whatever you want to merge on top into the over slot and the other node into the base. Similar to layers, you can use a black and white mask to mask out where the merging happens. To do so, you would connect a node into the mask slot at the bottom. My favorite things about nodes is you can easily hook up a single node multiple times across the whole graph for a shared, cleaner, and optimized scene. If you want to create a new node or adjustment, it's really simple to do. You either right click and go down to the nodes menu where you have to just find what you want to add, or if you know the name of the node you are after, you can press tab on your keyboard and type the name of it and select it from the list for quicker creation. If you want an empty layer to paint or project into, then you can search for paint and this will give you the same as a basic layer, or you can press P on the keyboard to create one quickly. When you create a paint node inside of the node editor, Mario will give you options like the size of the patches and the color depth. The reason for this is because a paint node is no longer derived from the channel it's inside of as a paint node can be plugged into multiple channels. A few additional shortcuts I use a lot are pressing M on the keyboard to quickly drop down a merge node, using Shift and X to flip the base and over inputs of a merge node, and D to disable nodes you currently have selected. The node graph can get quite confusing when you have a lot going on, so one tip I find is using a node called the backdrop to help organize my scene. If you drop one down, you can change the color and the name of it. Say, for example, you want to visually identify all your base color nodes. When you move the backdrop node, everything inside of it will also move. I like to organize all the masks I'm going to reuse in one backdrop so they're easy to reuse without duplicating them and cluttering up my scene. There are also some navigation shortcuts you can take advantage of when using the node graph editor. Pressing F on the keyboard will frame your current selection, sending your view to it. If you know the name of a node, say for example you want to find the channel output node, then you can use the search function by right clicking and going edit search node. Then you type in the name of a node and it will find it for you. This is one of the many reasons why good naming is important when it comes to texturing. That should be enough to get you up and running with nodes in Mari. You can do some really powerful things in the node editor, too much to cram into a short video, so I suggest playing around with it and getting the hang of it yourself. Since I've started using it, I've completely switched over to it and rarely use layers anymore. Thanks for watching and join me in the next video to learn how to export the great textures you've made in Mari. Thank you.